That's the podcast. That's, that's, that's where we start the networking. That's so, that is such a vibe. Um, hell yes. Episode 72 of From Everyone. I'm here with Ryan O'Bear. I finally learned how to say your name, I think. Yeah. Yes. Did you not? I thought you, I thought you said it last. That's fine. I might. I'm so bad with them. Here. Yes. And I'm so bad with names. And yeah. I feel like. I wish I remembered more of what happens on the podcast. It's all good. That's <laughs> but what it's I'm like, here for. There are times where like, I, have I asked them this? Have I not asked them this? And then you start telling a story and I'm like, oh, I have this Honestly, you can before. ask me the same question every time and I'll probably forget I answered I, it. I was trying to figure out as I got in today, like how we talked about how we got into drums, how we talked about this stuff. And it's yeah. like, I think so. And yeah. I kind of can skim can through. The the good part is that like now I have the time stamps in the episode, which makes it very easy to go yeah. through. But the first like 40 episodes don't have timestamps. So it's impossible to figure out what we talked through talked about without listening to it, which is even more of a fucking disaster on yeah. my end. Um, but yeah, dude, O'Bear. Yes, O'Bear. My name's, my name's Two Animals, so if you ever forget. That's literally, yeah, Rhino Bear. Rhino Bear. <laughs> that's exactly where that's it came why, from. That's where Rhino came from, so everybody who knows <laughs> that me by that. That was the cool shit in like third grade when you figure that out. The fucked up thing is I didn't figure it out until I was like... It is pretty high IQ. 18, I'll give you that. <laughs> I think. 18, okay, that's 19. a little late. Yeah, but like I, I grew up playing hockey, and the yep. first person to ever call me Rhino was one of my coaches in like maybe nine or eight, but I didn't, it didn't click in my head that like, Ryan O. It was just like something he did, but it was also just like everybody on the team. It was like Bobo, Sean O, Ryan O. Sure. Like everybody just had O on the end of their name. And then one day, like I think I just like clicked and I was like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I think he was on to something. That's my that alcoholic name. dad was like, on That's my name though. Yeah. So it's just been a built in nickname now forever. Hell yes. Forever, basically my adult life. Tradition continues, yes, forever as in the last 10 years yeah, or so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell yes, episode 72, we're here. Uh, Rhino Bear is a drummer in Chain Twist. Uh, Chain Twist did a lot of cool things. They have a lot of cool shows coming up, a lot of cool shows in the past. Uh, the one coming up is at The Cave. Uh, I wrote the date down here. It is Saturday, October, Saturday, October 3rd. Saturday, August 3rd. August 3rd. Saturday, August 3rd at The Cave in West Haven, uh, opening for Before I Turn. Before I Turn, um, Darkest Part of Me. I try to only say one band because I know if I try and list more than one, I'm going to forget someone. That just feels rude. Ever changer. <laughs> And, and the fifth band that got added Hell yes. after I looked at the flyer. Hell forgot. yes. Normally it takes Jack a while to come down and hang out, but it sounds like Jack he was excited buddy. to come hang out with you, bud. So um, the other thing that I'll say before I get into the podcast is I'm expecting a phone call and I've been waiting on it all day. So my phone is here. I'm expecting it to go off because that's how things work where, yeah, the second I start doing something important is when they will communicate to me that I need to. Uh, so if I disappear in the middle, I guess the audience won't really know, but they'll. Yeah. We're going to buy a car live on air. We could. We could. Yeah, I am hoping. Praying that in the next forty six minutes, just put Jack on the phone. Call. If they call, just put Jack on the phone. Uh, dude, he would talk to my secretary. He <laughs> yeah. talk to my assistant. That's a terrifying <laughs> voice to hear on the other side. Is that fat motherfucker? But oh, he's beautiful. He's, he's the best guy. Fat, he's big boned. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, if the shoe fits, uh, and he needs bigger <laughs> shoes, I guess he's going to settle about it. Um, hell yes, the cave. Uh, go buy tickets. I believe tickets are only on sale at the door. Is that accurate? I think there's a link. I don't know anything about it. I've been um, seeing people saying that the tickets are flying and also says on the flyer that things well, are only yeah, at the door. Well, yeah, I personally, I think Chain Twist as a band might know more about it, but me on a sub-personal level, oh, yes. I don't know anything <laughs> okay. that's going on. Who is the resident Chain Twist expert on these things? Mostly Dan, normally. Okay. Dan normally, I feel like, has the most connections in Connecticut, at sure. least. So people go to Dan for stuff. Um, Joe and Josh will get hit up for masks, but, and I'm um, just tell me when to show up <laughs> for the most part. Apparently, though, this show is going to be really good. Yeah. I didn't know that or understand that because not to be, I've never heard of Before I Turn. Like, we've played with Darkest Part of Me before. Mm -hmm. um, in my head, it was just like, oh, we're going to play at the cave. In my brain, like, coming from like war and stuff, we used yep. to play at the cave and it's like 15 people. So I'm like, oh, we're going to play at the cave and it's just going to be a fun time to hang out with my friends and stuff or whatever. Yes. And everybody's like, tickets are fine. Like, we got the flyer and it's like, there's already 40 tickets sold. And I was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> and they're like, everybody loves before I turn. Like it's yeah. their like yeah, first yeah, show yeah. in two years and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I literally texted Dan like verbatim. I was like, am I like drastically underestimating this show? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah. Yeah, you and might was, be. Before I turn yeah. was like a, a local band around here. Uh, and there's a, a fun story associated with this. So I'll give it the context of, yeah, they're a local band. And when I was coming into shooting shows in 2016-ish, 2017, they were everywhere. I feel like I shot them a hundred times. Uh, and one of their guys, Alex Anglis, I believe, does a lot of the writing there. He's one of the, yeah, the, the quarterback of the band, I guess how I would describe him. Yeah. Uh, and he's done a lot of stuff. And it seemed like they went from like a metalcore band and at some point developed like a lore with them. And he really got into like 
storytelling and creating like a character. And That's I, sick. I believe that the albums are all like almost like novels that are like sequential. Okay. It's like the development of a character is going along. And I'm, I respect that. I'm into I, that. I guess if I'm talking about on podcast, I wish I was more of an expert on it, but it is very cool. And it's, yeah, more lore centric, I guess, to go to your Word, sleep. Then, yeah, I'll, def- I'll definitely have to um, check it out then. They I, rule. So yes, they went from like a local band and then they kind of became like an internet thing that took off along with this lore. And it feels like this is their return to like rad. playing physical shows. Cool. And I guess maybe the pandemic, yeah, thwarted that for yeah, everyone. That so was definitely all happening when I was in like my pop punk, like, there local you go. scene so like it just wasn't even like in my venn diagram of that was stuff where you came from uh i took a detour okay because war was like metalcore ish correct war was like more like post rock hardcore how do you spell war w-r-e okay i didn't yeah. know if it was that or like like we are going to war no we that was combat. the whole thing war started with me and josh at a chili's and Josh was like, I think I just want to start like a new band and I want to call it war because it'd be like a fun, like little like emo, like sure. play on yeah. words and stuff. And we're like, yeah, it'll be fun. Chili's, uh, who gives a fuck about Chili's? It's a chain restaurant. They're good. They're bad. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I used to work at a school for kids with autism. And mm-hmm. at some point there was a meme about like, welcome to Chili's. Oh yeah. Welcome to Chili's. And I, I never knew the context of it, but it was one of those really? things that got into their vernacular. Have you seen it now? I st- I feel like I must have, but I can't recall it. It's basically moment. a kid who walks in front of his mirror, like in his underwear, <laughs> and he just goes, "Welcome to Chili's." Like it's it's that's vine, a it's a vine, it's a it's basically a from vine, vine. Oh, and damn. I'm just like, yeah, that's a beautiful. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that kid died, unfortunately. R.I.P. Okay, well, we're gonna leave that part of the story out because it's a much less fun part of it. It's in but, there now. Um, no, I'm cutting it out. So first, I'm cutting out of the podcast. Wild, this time. good for me. <laughs> um, no, I had a couple a couple cuts recently, but nothing nothing too significant. Damn. Uh, usually just like a name that slips out that we don't mm. want to have in there. Um, but yeah, life goes on. Uh, the reason I bring that up though is because yes, in the school for kids with autism, they just got so fixated on welcome to Chili's and it was everywhere. And it was one of those of like me realizing I'm officially old of like, oh, I don't know what the meme is anymore. Like yeah. it, it feels like, yeah, what the fuck is up, Danny's like same that, shit. That's like, how I, I feel like understand. about like skibbity and shit like that. Yeah. I like, have no yeah. clue. They're no also into Roblox now. and it was just like, I... I still to this day can't begin to understand what the fuck Roblox is. I don't is know what it's Roblox like, is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I have no idea. I don't even going to try. Chili's you know, is great though. Chili's is beautiful. We used to and go it's to great. Chi- they started a band there. Yeah, yeah. We used to go to Chili's every because there's a Chili's down the street from Joe's house where we used to practice in his basement before we had the space. So every Thursday we would finish practice and we'd go to Chili's, and we had the same waitress every time we would go sit in like the <laughs> bar area and have the same waitress every week, and she knew who we were. And we got to the point where we didn't even need to order. We would just sit down. She'd be like, what's up, guys? I'll be right with you. And then just basically bring the food out. <laughs> and then one week, she came on. She's like, guys, I have some bad news. This is my last week. Like, I got a job at the casino that's opening up in Springfield, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. at the time. So it's been a pleasure to, like, hang with you guys. And we're like, oh, my God, that sucks. Like, that sucks. But, like, that's good for you. Like, you got out of Chili's. Cool. <laughs> and... We legitimately had like a band meeting about it. We were like, <laughs> are we done with Chili's? Like, do we go back? Like, what do we do? Like, our girl's not there Applebee's? anymore. Like, we literally, so we tried it one more week and there was a new guy and he was like, what can I get you? And we all had to like process like a menu and like we're basically left and we're like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> there is so much that I need to unpack in this meeting and it is the best tangent I've been on in a long time. Yeah. Uh, for starters, one, I love what it says about you guys, that you guys are all such routine-oriented people. Mm-hmm. That the, you sat in the same place, you all had the same food, and that it was, like, basically not even conversational anymore. She kind of no, just knew. It was the best. Uh, what does everyone get? What is... Um, it was mostly just, like, because it was, like, a th- we would practice on Thursday nights, so it was, like, 10 p.m. So it was, wasn't really even, like, dinner. Like, I would go and just get the cookie skillet, like uh, we get like okay, a nachos. Okay. It was just, so it's not like yeah. full meal. So it's not okay. as impressive as it seems, but like it is, yeah. but like drinks and everything, it was all the same every now and then it'd be like, Oh, like I'm hungry. I'm going to get chicken fingers. Cause sure. I get chicken fingers. <laughs> but like, yeah, like that was basically it. We'd walk in, sit down, just like talk about either practice or like whatever was coming up and she'd just bring us food and we'd be like sick and we'd bail. Uh, the other piece of this, and I'm trying to figure out how to word this and how much of myself I'd like to include in this. Uh, <laughs> was she someone that like y'all were like flirting with? Was she our age? Was it like a 60 year old lady that it was like no, funny to flirt she, with? Like <laughs> describe this No, we were never, it was never like flirting at <laughs> oh, all. No, okay, okay. she was like maybe a little older than us. Okay. Like not like 60s. Maybe like we were probably like high like late twenties, she's probably like mid thirties. So like okay. not out of the spectrum of anything, but no, yeah. it was never anything. Okay. 
It was literally just like <laughs> friendly, like we're there all the time. She happens to work at that time. Life's good. You guys started a band in Chile, or uh, yes. So this is where the name War comes from. You guys are all sitting in Chile, He's going like. It was just fuck? me and Josh. Like okay. we didn't left. We were still doing novelty, I think, and we had just happened to. Okay. We might have been recording, I think, and him and I just went to a different Chili's. <laughs> and oh, here's another fun story about Chili's that I just remembered. We were at the Chili's the, <laughs> the day. Chili's cast. Yeah, basically the day we conceptualized war. Our waiter there came up to us and he was like a tattooed guy and everything. He goes, y'all are in a band, huh? Yep. And we were like, we're actually just forming one right now. <laughs> like we're talking about it. He goes, oh, sick. Well, we should play shows together. And then, like, a year and a half later, Josh got a random, like, message on Facebook from said waiter, and we booked a show and played a show with the dude who was so sick. Holy, were they any good? <laughs> yeah, they were pretty good. Yeah, like, it was fine. It was a good show. Like, it was... <laughs> it's just how you do stuff. <laughs> that's, that's networking, I guess. That's like, networking, it is baby. The, yeah, the... We like to think of it as all these, like, grandiose interactions of, yeah, you meet the sound guy, you introduce yourself to him, and it's like... Nah, no, dude, you oh, wait, just go to us. Chili's. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to do that. That's yeah. what I'm going to start doing. Look for podcast guests at Chili's. I'm going to go sit at the bar and be like, who's got a story to tell? Who's got a story to <laughs> tell? What's you you should start folks? remote podcasting from Here's Chili's. another loosey-goosey one. Uh, so I guess I'm going to date the podcast. Yes, this will be out a couple weeks after it's recorded because I'm trying to get ahead, uh, which I don't like doing uh, be- for stories like this. Uh, Capulet Fest just happened this weekend. Uh, and Capulet Fest was a great, a great event. Did it happen? Though? Everything went perfectly. There was no drama at all. Um, I heard there was a couple disgruntled attendees for no reason. That's yeah, there's to me. really no. I don't know what everybody was so upset about. Uh, it seemed fine to me. What a disaster! And of course, I feel terrible for everyone who lost money yeah, in the endeavor. And like, uh, I feel bad for the people who paid money to right. go to that. Uh, I feel bad for the bands. I had friends who were coming here to work. One of yeah. my buddies coming up from New Orleans. And I was stoked to see him. Yeah, because uh, he was coming up with Census Fail to do drum teching for them. Right, uh, and they dropped off, so I didn't get to see my buddy, which is a very small casualty in the thing. But like, yeah, yeah I have. It affected a lot of people, and I don't want to be insensitive to that, but also it's funnier to be like, great time. Yeah, good one. Uh, I thought about, uh, <laughs> I thought about like setting up a table. Thank God I had stuff to do. But there's a part of my brain of like, if I was just going for views, if I was just chasing clout, and I'd like to believe that I'm Which chasing substance, that I, I'd like, it's important to me that I'm chasing substance here, that I try and put out clips that are meaningful and have positive value instead of just being salacious or just like, I'm sure I've said it to you, that like, I should just sit here and be like, sleep token sucks, and that's yeah. going to do way better than anything else that I say. Right. But I try and have positive content. I was literally, I was truly thinking about going and sitting outside the fest and being like, you should, what's up? Talk to me. Honestly, it'd be so though, fun like, to have like a rotating five people. There'd be some band guy who hops in like, yeah, maybe I get the fucking the, the guy, the promoter, whatever the fuck you yeah. want to call him. At the but I think that it. that's a good idea though. Cause like, yeah, like it's a good way to get views necessarily, but it's not like, you're not queuing it up like yeah. falsely. I think yeah. if anything, that like leaves it up to whoever sits down. Where if you don't even have yes. questions, like so, like you, if you went in and you're like, I'm gonna be like, what do you think about sleep token? I think we all know what I'm doing there. Though. Like it, to me, it's a, it's yeah. equivalent to the was it Steven Crowder who do the thing like change my mind? Yeah, it's like yeah, I know that you're you're. Sh- miraging this is like, oh, we're going to have an honest discussion. It's like, no, no, no. You're trying to get someone on there to say the most controversial thing so you can shut them down and like, yeah, it I, felt too close to that. If that's what you do it, then yeah. But like sure. if you gen, if you go in it genuinely and you're just like sit down and like, what do you have to say right now? And you just talk about it. Like yeah. if you listen to them and you go, okay, I'm just going to disagree. Then yeah. yeah, that sucks. You yeah. suck. But like, no, if you just had a thing, you're like, yo, I'm just doing a podcast. Like, how's your experience going right now? Yeah. Like just, just news interview style. Like, I was tempted and like, then, thank yeah. God I was busy and it just, it felt disingenuous. It felt slimy to me. And that was, I guess my bigger holdup. Yeah. Um, but I did have the thought of like, there is, I think you could do that. There you is reach to be found there. hundred percent. I don't, yeah. I want to chase what is intrinsically interesting to me more than I want to chase that. But I'm, we all know how to play the game. It's just a matter yeah. of what buttons you want to push and when do you want to push Yeah, it. And it all, like I said, it's like, it's just how your intentions are. So like, yeah. if you're playing the game that like slimy people play, but you're playing it right. Like, yeah. I feel like then that's like a lead that can be a leading factor. Like it changing, I guess. What's, like if your the, thing takes off then people yeah. can be like, Oh, I don't have to be a complete dick. I can just go talk to people and get views or whatever. Maybe. Yeah. I think the flip side is what's the saying is like, once you're, once you're in the mud, it's hard to tell who's a pig or something. Yeah. There's that, some dumb yeah. shit about that of like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, I would rather, no, I'd rather fair. keep a smaller platform that I feel good about than have a bigger platform no, that I'm fair. like insecure about what yeah. the fuck's the point of this. Cause ultimately this is an aside project it's about having fun. It's about hanging out with my homies yeah. uh, and finding excuses and time to hang out with people that I wouldn't otherwise make. Right. Uh, so yeah, felt like it was 
counterproductive to what I wanted, but 100% it was in my brain. And I'm forgetting what got us here to doing a podcast on location. Oh, sitting in chairs. Yeah, yeah, we're playing with Before I Turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> before I Turn, yes. They have lore. Good they band. have lore. Yeah, stoked to have them back. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, we're going from War. Uh, the pop punk was the other piece that I wanted to touch oh, on. Yeah. You mentioned that, and I didn't know that. So yeah. uh, War is more like, yeah, post-rock metal-ish, something in that universe. Yeah. Where does the pop punk world come into? I've always known you as not that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess my my entire band lore begins with me learning drums. Bobby from Dreamwake and I started. I forget. Yep. Started yep, yep, our yep, first yep. band together yep, yep. with uh, some of his family and one of our friends from high school, Ralph. Um, I joined a different metalcore band called Reach from Above. From there. That kind of just fell apart. As bands do. As bands do. Um, so then I was kind of like a free agent, I suppose, um, with no friends, like in terms of like how I can like get yeah. picked up, like or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I happened, and that was when I was like starting to realize it's okay to be like musically diverse. So I wasn't listening to just Rise Records anymore. I was getting really into the story so far. I was getting into like, title fight basement like all those things that were kind of happening in 2013 yep um and ironically enough i went to a fear the tyrant show because i was like they're still my friends like they're playing at the space like it's 10 minutes from my house i'm gonna go and my friend matt who i'd gone i'd grew up going to school with in high school we did all kinds of projects and stuff he was there doing a journalism project for one of his classes at uconn because he knew I was in the band. What's Matt's last name? Gantos. Okay, no. He, I was going to say you definitely don't. Uh, it, whatever, yeah, neither here nor there. Yeah. So he was there because he had saw Fear the Time was playing and thought I was still in the band. So he's like, oh, I'm friends with Ryan. I'll just go do my project. Like he had to write, sure. he had to write an article about like a live of entertainment thing. <laughs> Which is such a, a lower version of like, oh, how's your girlfriend? Uh, we broke up. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Well, it was funny because I got there and he was there and he's like, yo, dude, what's up? Like, long time no see. I'm like, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, I came to see you play. And I'm like, I'm not even in the band anymore. It's been like a year. And he goes, shit. Well, I'm here. And I'm still going to do it. And then we were talking and he's like, yeah, I've been learning how to play guitar and stuff and like getting better with it. And I'm like, sick, let's start a band. Like, if you want to start a band, like I've been... I'm down to do whatever. Like, it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be anything. So we decided on that. We had He had, like, a couple demos. I had maybe, like, a little bit. And then we were like, okay, well, what are we going to do about this? We're two people. Sure. Like, and it, 21 Pilots wasn't even a thing then. So we didn't <laughs> even have a roadmap to follow. My so, last two, or I guess uh, there's one in between, but the two before that were both one-man band. Yeah. So there is, there is a there's precedent a thing. for it. Yeah. Um, so we started figuring out. We started posting, like, Facebook to like people we knew were like, Hey, anybody play bass? Does anybody want to play bass? Does anybody want to learn how to play bass? Sure. Like literally we were at that point where we we're just like, it didn't matter if we were good or anything. We just wanted to play songs and have fun. Um, we posted something on Craigslist and we, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and we got a hit, we got a hit from a, oh, sure you did. yeah, we did. Uh, an actual one though. We got a, we got a hit from a, a gentleman named Dan, not our Dan. Yep. Um, previous my Dan. Um, he played bass. He's like, yeah, I got like three or four songs. Like, I'd love to do it. He was our age. He lived in uh, Stratford, and he's like, oh yeah, let's meet up. So we met up at the Sam Ash. That's now closed. R.I.P. Um, met up, talked about it. Like, passed demos around. We're like, yeah, sure, let's just do it. So we were a band formed on Craigslist. That was like in our bio, like on Spotify and stuff or whatever. Oh we're just my like, God. yeah, we literally formed basically on Craigslist, and uh, we were called Salader, which was a word that. We were looking up band names, and it's from the the book The Road by Cormac McCarthy. And I was just looking up, like, cool words, and that came up because it apparently, like, has never been used anywhere else. It's just that book, and it doesn't really have, like, a definition or anything. Okay, what was the word again? Salader. Salader. I don't even know if I'm pr- pronouncing Can it like that. spell it? S-A-L-I-T-T-E-R. Okay. So, Salader. Yeah, and Okay. Which led to us playing shows with bands being like, Slitters, so thanks yeah, for playing tough, with yeah, us. And then we would yeah. be like, yeah, we did that to ourselves. Um, but we <laughs> see were you sick. later. Yeah, man, <laughs> see ya. Um, we were, it was fun, though. It was super fun. We, uh, that's how like, I became friends with a lot of like the Space Crowd people and mm-hmm. how I met Josh and Corey and all them like through that. And 
Josh must have had a mean posse jump back in the day. He did. He really did. Yeah, and we talked about it on the Blind Euphoria where like I he joined that his band, and then we were immediately just like best friends basically yeah. from there because we were just like, yo, we play all time low. Do you want to play all time low? Yep. And then that happened. Then that band that Josh was in basically was like, yo, we want you in this band. So I was like, okay, I'll play in both bands, which never works. Mm-hmm. So Souter kind of started falling apart. Dan, I think, was already moving. Like, people were already moving, like, and yeah. stuff. So, like, everything be kind of just, like, I got a text, which was really my fault. So, like, it's fine. And we're like, hey, we don't want to push you either way, but, like, do you even want to do this? Kind of like one of those things where I was just like, that's fair. Like, I'm not putting as much time into it. It's yeah. completely on me. Like, and it, did, it wasn't intentional. Like, I didn't want it to be like that. But that's how it happens. I was literally like, yo, I'll help you find a drummer. I'll play. If you want to book shows, I'll play still. But I get it. If you want to move on without me, like it makes sense. And then novelty was going for a bit. And then that kind of ran its course. And then, yeah, war started. And now we're fucking Jane Twist. Hell yes. Yes. Okay. It's a bunch. I like that. I didn't realize the depth of that. Yeah, it's the long story. No, the short version, I guess. Sure. Oh, we got time for all of them. Uh, You reminds me, you talked about the Craigslist band in there, which is a beautiful little Easter egg that I didn't know we were going to stumble into today. Yeah. Um, I was telling you before the show that I recently commissioned some work, uh, and I obviously can't talk exactly what that's going into. Mm -hmm. What I can talk about uh, is I was looking to commission some work, uh, and so I posted on Reddit forums because I was looking for someone who could do this thing and it was like, I looked in Fiverr and I didn't quite find the person. I just, yeah, didn't know where to look to find someone to do this thing for us. Uh, to do, yeah, 3D stuff. Uh, so I posted in like the Unreal Engine forums, I posted in the Blender forums, was just like, hey, looking for stuff. Uh, and I didn't realize how terrible of an idea that was for me. Where I got like 30 or 40 replies, which was like kind of nice to have that many options. Yeah. Uh, and most of them were very amateur beginner stuff, right. uh, which wasn't what we were looking for. But it was like... 100%, this is who I think was going to be. Like, I did that for sure. I've done that before when I was getting into photo of just yeah, like, you got to you reach out to anything who's asking for work and see if you can take something on. And like, probably not going to work out, but you got to put your name in the hat. And like, exactly. there is an exercise in putting yourself out there and like learning to get rejected. And like, yeah, there's, even if you don't get the job, there's a lot of value that's found from applying yeah, for those kind of jobs. Everything's a learning experience. Yes. Uh, most of them were that. Uh, we ended up finding a guy who was great. Uh, one of the other people who found sent me like, so people like send me their thing. Uh, on Reddit, and then I guess on Reddit you can't really share media, so they would add me on Discord, and then through Discord they would send everything. Mm-hmm. So right now my Discord's a fucking disaster. <laughs> 40 people following up going, hey, do hey, you still up, want man? someone? No. And I have to be, copy-paste the same message like, no, sorry, we found someone. Yeah. I appreciate your time, blah, blah, blah. One of the people who reached out, so yeah, I got a bunch of portfolios, and most of them are pretty underwhelming. Yeah, what, any, they're all learning, whatever. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't yeah. to speak poorly of them. It just wasn't what we were looking right. for. Uh, one of them is state-of-the-art artwork. Uh, and I was kind of like, I recognize this from somewhere. It was clips from a Post Malone music video That's that he wild. did for like the the Spider Man soundtrack. I think oh, the sick. I think it's the Sunshine yeah, Sunflower. Sunflower. Yeah, Sunflower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's like a music video, an animated music video from like Into the Spider Verse, I believe was the title of the movie that it was like. Yeah. Based on I'm, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not an expert on that, but uh, and it was one of those like, oh, you literally just like screenshotted a music video and sent it to me and thought I wouldn't know Notice. that like. Yeah, you sent the biggest artist in the world. I was gonna say the biggest ten. artist in one of like the biggest superhero movies of the last decade. <laughs> yeah, like, I wouldn't know. And it was like I listen. There's a chance we get a great deal here that yeah. we hire someone at an amateur price and get Post Malone. Oh, like, artwork. He's actually most the guy. likely the guy Post Malone is hiring is not in Reddit forums looking for more work. And if <laughs> he is more power to him, honestly, he, but truly yes, yes, yeah. also fair. Uh, but it made me laugh of like. I got into a couple messages with him like, this is really cool. Can you send me some other stuff? And he's like, sent some other things that like were not anywhere near the Just same caliber. Just slowly degrading down. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and all of a sudden it clicked. I was like, oh, he, uh, yeah, that's why I, I recognize. So that's why it's familiar. He didn't. I thought he just like did like a fanfic of the music video. Yeah. And then, of course, I look up the video and it's like, oh, yeah, it's no, the middle 30 directly seconds. Directly from, like, from, yeah. <laughs> which was like, like, this oh. is what I can do. Yeah. I didn't do this, but I could. <laughs> if he called me. Yeah. This is what it would look yeah, like. Yeah, if too. Marvel gave me their million dollars, and was like, ah, I think you need a little more than that. It's going to take a little more than a supercomputer to get you from, yeah, yeah point, point, literally A, step yeah. zero one <laughs> to Spider Man. Yeah, just Spider Man. It's, it's going to be a little bit of a leap there. Um, life's good. Um, you're also in a band called Chain Twist. I am in a band <laughs> called Chain Twist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got two shows coming up, or sorry, two shows that just passed. Uh, yeah. We opened for Revenant at Cherry Street and then opened for Windwalkers at Varsity at the Webster. Uh, I was curious, like, comparing those two. So one of them is, like, very, I guess, 
uh, one of them is at a local venue. It's at a bar. It's very much like an underground kind of thing. And I guess yeah. the Webster Underground is called the Underground, but it's a mainstream kind of thing. Uh, how are those two things different in the booking process, in the procedure of them? Is it all kind of another day at work for you? Or is there like a significant difference as you're getting ready for them in the load-in process? Like, yeah, how do those two things compare? I mean, for the, in terms of booking, it's all kind of the same, at least to me. Like, I don't do any other booking. But like okay. from my vantage point, we basically will get hit up by a promoter that mm -hmm. we already have, like either already have a relationship or in uh, the Windwalkers case, uh, Justin Leach hit us up because mm -hmm. he had gotten, we had gotten recommended through someone. And so basically just, hey, we want you to play this or we were recommended you to play this. Would you guys be interested? So that's all the same. Is there a ton of paperwork involved in that? Or is it just- It's a literally a responding agreement. to the text. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. We- Sometimes, I mean, like, sometimes there will be, but that's, like, in my head for, like, bigger bands that have mm -hmm. big guarantees and stuff, and yeah. we're just, like, please let us play a show. Yep. And they're, like, you can play the show. So that's basically what it is. It's basically just responding to the email or the Instagram DM, like, yeah, we're in. Sounds good. Let us know. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. But they're all the same in terms of booking. Getting there is a little different because, like you sure. said, one's a bar and one's a little more of a, like, uh the mainstream they, like yeah. they do this yeah so yeah like you show up to the the revenant and the renovere which threw me off a lot they're both great bands and great people but the name thing like threw me for a loop because i was like why do you guys have like the same name <laughs> um yeah it was tough um yeah we'd get there and like the person running the venue like isn't there yet and nice. so we're all just hanging out in the parking lot and everything was great um it was a really laid back night. I don't want to super talk shit about it. The sure. bands were great and everything, but it was a very, I'll we'll just say it was a very laid back night in sure. terms of the sense of urgency, Sure. which is a very stark contrast mm -hmm. to the uh, Varsity and the Windwalker show, which was very go, go, go. Dialed in, yeah. Yeah, which is no one's fault, really. It's just mm -hmm. kind of the consequences of playing a show. Do you have a preference as a, like, as a, I, I think I would enjoy the Webster being like, time 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 do this at this time and i feel like the way you describe shows like we just want to show up and play stuff and so it almost seems like that would cater itself more to like the more laissez-faire if i'm using that term correctly i right. know you sure it's like a french term for like not giving a fuck i think yeah that'll <laughs> sure work. It's more articulate than that listen but. that's fine i mean if it's super laissez-faire then you shouldn't laissez-faire about i want to google it but right i'm not. not to google on the show because it's more fun to just be you wrong need a, and like, like learn. fact check guy like joe rogan has the guy like in the back and you're just like yo look about you need, the, like off screen you're good the ideal growth of the show is to go multi-cam and i think multi-cam would require someone off camera helping with that oh yeah so to I'll me those are all kind of one and the same thing you but, can just hire me I'll yeah do it. the issue with multi-cam is that i've invested so much money into this damn camera because i use it for oh, music yeah, videos 100%. that like getting two comparable cameras is a nightmare and like to yeah. me you need three cameras like a two camera setup is weird because we don't have the wide shot or i only have a close of one of us right and so i think it has to be three camera and that's where it's like okay i'm not i can't do three of those Too that's much. fucked up yeah. yeah so i've looked into other options and i yeah i guess maybe if money is right then we'll, I would get, we'll think get about there it, but we'll get neither there. here nor there like on youtube um, <laughs> subscribe <laughs> patreon yes um, <laughs> better help i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Vibe City. Uh, we're talking Vibe about, yes. City, uh, so dude. my question to you was, yeah, which show do you oh, prefer? Do, do you prefer, prefer like the laissez-faire, if we're using that term correctly at all? I I really like the middle. Mm -hmm. I don't like when everybody takes their sweet ass time. Yeah. Because it's, for me, I don't get, I wouldn't call it, I don't get nervous. I just get like, I don't know what to do yeah until i play isn't so, that anxious yeah, yeah yeah i guess i'm just yeah i guess anxious in my head like anxious in that session is like nervous which isn't correct sure. but like i because i'm not worried about playing i just like need a task mm -hmm. especially in a show setting like yeah. i need something to do so like immediately yep. i'm like where can i set my drums up where can we do so like in yep. the second that's all done i'm like shit yes. and like i'll just be walking back and forth and like anybody in my band can like attest to that where i'm just like yep a wreck of just like bouncing around and then the second we're done i'm like sick i'm just like finished mm -hmm. i'll just show up merch or whatever i used to pace in the photo pit and mm. it, like i no one ever said anything but i know people didn't love it because it's just bizarre to yeah. like pace up i'm there. constantly walking <laughs> but, around yeah. complaining about how i'm like <laughs> feeling that's where the camera was like a saving grace for me it's like i just it gives me a task and it's like 
even if I don't have any settings to change, you yeah. can always scroll through a menu. You can always like open that corner of the menu that you never go to and be like, oh, what yeah. even are these options? I didn't know my camera could have whatever the fuck. Yeah, dumb setting yeah. no one would ever use, but it's nice yeah. to know that it exists kind and of thing. It's nice for change with now still being like a newer band that we're basically playing like first or second every time. Sure. So like I don't have to sit around waiting. Yeah. Like sitting around waiting, like we used to like headline stuff as a war mm-hmm. and it's like 11 30 and i'm just like we haven't played yet and i'm gonna lose my mind that's it's yes. terrible but i in terms of playing shows i'd rather just the middle like i mm-hmm. don't like when people take their time like changing over and stuff and it's like no let's just keep it going because i want to leave basically mm-hmm. the end goal is i want to leave mm-hmm. i want to go to bed it's, i'm overstimulated like there's too much happening mm-hmm. i'm out yep. and then there's the opposite where it's like whether it's sound guys fall a band previous fault like where it's like oh now we're crunched for time it's go 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 mm-hmm. now i'm stressed which yeah. normally doesn't happen but if it's like oh we need to set things up and now especially with like me having a laptop and things yeah like i need all that to work and yep. it's not just like setting the drums up where i can deal with it and like adapt like this it all needs to happen yeah and, and also if, you've set up drums since you were whatever a kid yeah you've set up a laptop for a year or two yeah so it's a much yeah newer, exactly it's a much newer process. thing yeah. like i literally fucked up ironically the show that was so lackadaisical and i didn't need to rush like i fucked up the interface and it was 75 percent the sound guy and like 25 percent me where i sure. just plugged in the wrong thing to the wrong side and he was just taking forever <laughs> Yep. But um a double whammy is always. Yeah, I is. plugged yeah. in the click side yep. to go front of house. So he was like, let's just test and I hit and just for soundtrack, thank God, just for soundtrack, and it's beep, beep, <laughs> beep. And I'm like, fuck. So it was like immediately paused it and pulled it out and fixed it. And he's already like coming down. I'm like, you don't need to come back down. It's already been 20 minutes. Just For my own uh, information, is it like left channel goes to front yeah. of house with click and right channel is or some version yeah. of that? Or is yeah. It like- so we, I, we have, I'm assuming most, this is how it all works for everybody. But basically you have your mono, um, not mono, your stereo track like on your DAW mm-hmm. where the click is hard panned to one side and with an interface you yep. split that channel. Yep. Yeah, the left goes to me and the right goes to the front of house. So, okay. Yeah. I've never known how that works. So this is learn something new every day. We're yeah. continuing the theme of the show. Hell yes. yeah. Um, yes, I uh, I guess my follow up then is like, or sorry, one piece of that is interesting is like how counterintuitive that like headlining is almost more stressful than opening for a lot of times. And yeah. like I understand that like for ticket sales it's more stressful and like that. As bullshit, a local but, like, band, it kind of just sucks. Like, if you're, like, Dreamwake or if you're, like, a touring mm-hmm. band, it's chill because you know what's happening. Like, you have a guarantee. Yeah. Like, it's, like, everything's cool. You're just hanging out. Like, sure. you know what it's going to be. But if you're just, like, if it's just, like, a local show mm-hmm. and you're just playing last, yep. like, it's not even headlining. Yep. Like, headlining for, like, a bill of just local bands is, like, a third. Yeah. Like, yep. second. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Like, and then if you play after that, you're, like, treading the line of people leaving and, like, everything. Unless, yeah, like, you're, like, a name. Yep. So when you're playing last, it's just, like, shit. Like, yep. you're watching all the bands and you're hoping they're all good because you have to watch all of them. Like, you can't bail. Like, you can't leave. Like, it's just you're stuck there mm-hmm. and you're watching the room get smaller and smaller as, like, it, the night gets later and later and you're, like, damn. I still have to do this like That's yeah and you interesting. go yeah you always think of yeah, you, yeah people watch the room fill up which is of course part yeah. of the game but I, yeah I've never it's also of the other just me being like a pessimist about most things where i'm just assuming that's what's gonna happen like we've had shows where it's been fine yeah but like in my head it's just like that's just what's gonna happen like we're gonna play last and everybody's gonna be like wow great show i'm out what is the most nerve-wracking part of the process for you? like from the moment you get the offer to the moment the set is over where is the peak? I just want there to be people. Stress. Okay. Like, I just want there to be people, especially with Chain Twist now. Like, we are such, like, an energy band mm-hmm. that, like, it doesn't really work, like, if there aren't people there. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really work if the crowd doesn't get it, mm-hmm. I guess, and if there's no crowd at all. Yes. So, like, my biggest concern is not, is everything going to work? Like, is the show going to happen? It's just basically when we get there, I'm like, who's going to start yeah. it? Yep. Like, because Dan's obviously going to command it. Dan's a great front man at that. Dan knows how to control the room. Mm-hmm. It's just, is the room going to get it? Yep. Which it's- didn't really happen with the Windwalker show, which is fine because we are not that band. Like, that was a very melodic yeah. singing. All the bands were great, but... I remember we got the show offer 
And I just said yes because one was just in Leech and I wanted to like say yes. And both Varsity and Windwalkers have like I hadn't heard of them. I've been seeing Windwalkers ads a lot and meaning to check them out. So it was just ironic that it happened and they're gonna be my Spotify wrapped for sure. <laughs> Your FBI agent knew. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. That it was gonna happen. They're gonna be my Spotify rap. Windwalkers, that album is incredible. And I told them that. But um Yeah, so I was listening to it and I'm like, oh, weird. Should not be on the show. Like it makes no sense. Like I know you need like the outlier band. We're sure. definitely the outlier band. Sure. Where it's just like ah uh, okay, I, and you can tell. I equate it almost like stand up comedy, and I I feel like I listen to so many like comedy podcasts that I feel like I know a lot more about that world than I probably do. But there's a similar thing there of like you can put the funniest person on stage, and if there's not people in the room to laugh, then they're not funny anymore. It's just kind yeah, of no, like it's like the, the the magic trick just doesn't work, which yeah. is like counterintuitive of like a literal magician you can put in front of three people and it's still the same like whoa like you don't need yeah. an auditorium full of people but in the context of metal i think we're yeah it's such a high energy genre it's like i think if you were playing an acoustic guitar you can play to three people yeah, the same as, and like i'm sure you'd rather play to a full room everyone would right. prefer that but like it, the, the thing still works yeah and somehow like, comedy and metal have this overlap of like no the thing doesn't quite work like there has to be the people there because playing it to nobody or playing it to a there has to be the given underwhelming yeah. yeah just doesn't quite get the thing done whatever the whatever the goal is i don't even know how to articulate what the fuck is i don't know how to articulate what doesn't happen but there is something that doesn't happen there it's like the experience i feel like it's just like the um the bottleneck like it's like putting mentos yeah. in like pepsi like yes. where it's just like you are expecting this thing to build and build and build and build and build and, build and yeah. then just like release. Yep. And if there's no Mentos, then you're just Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> and Pepsi's fine on its own, but yeah. it's a lot cooler to look at when you put a Mentos in it. I'm wondering what happens in a in a knocked loose show with no one there. And of course, we'll never see that because you can loose ask is... you can ask Josh. He's <laughs> been there. Okay. Yeah. But that would have been before that they were the they are, experts yeah, that they are now. Right. Right. Yeah. Like I've uh, yeah, I, we've all seen bigger bands with like Nobody. bad omens used to come play the underground and yeah. not sell tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, and th it's been beautiful to watch them succeed, but like, it's not fair to compare that band to the one that is now. Cause it just isn't, there's not the same thing there, but like I, uh, during the pandemic, the, the Webster hosted like live streams and we got to go see uh, dream Lake was one of the bands who played it. And it was very weird to like watch them play on stage. And because it was a live stream, they were still performing like, it was definitely a step above band practice and all the lights were there. Like it had all the things of a show. Right. But instead of a crowd, it was five cameras that were in the room. Yeah. And it was a very bizarre, like dystopian thing of like, yeah, I guess the whole, that whole era of time is kind of dystopian, but that yeah. moment really like highlighted it to me of like, Oh, this is bizarre where, yeah, Bobby's on stage doing as great as he ever does. Right. But somehow instead of, you know, say what's up Hartford, he's like, Hi everyone! Like, yeah, it was yeah, just this it's very strange. bizarre thing that yes, to your point, highlights like that. Yeah, there is a need for the symbiosis of these two things, and yeah. without yeah, without either part of it, and I, I don't think that you could put uh, both Chain Twist and Dreamwaker great bands if we take whatever a dog shit band is. Like, I don't think you put a dog shit band on a sold out stage and have it work. Like, it's it's not that a sold out room fixes it. Like, it no. needs both parts. Yeah, uh, but there is yeah. Uh, a lackluster crowd and I uh, Wesley Robinson from Bearing Point was on here a little bit ago and really got into like how a, a smaller show is just practice and how he like uses it as an excuse to like get better at the stuff and also like if you can command a room of 10 people you can command a room of 100 people like yeah it's a it's a trial by fire kind of thing that I really enjoyed him speaking about and like yeah he really seemed to internalize it and not like not take pride in small shows but still appreciate that like this is an opportunity for me and it's my job to capitalize on it so like I respect that that's the part version of band, but there is only so much lifting you can do in that moment. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm listening to the Wesley episode and I've really resonated with me because I'm listening the whole time he's saying all of that. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's me. Like a hundred percent. Cause mm -hmm. like I grew up even now, like before chain twist, I had played honestly, maybe one show. Actually, that's not true. Cause for the time you see all those like Webster, like battle of the bands that went on to like 1am. So there's like hundreds of people there, but like yep. that's a battle of the bands. In terms of just like shows, mm -hmm. I'd maybe I'd played one like sold out like more than fifty people show in my life. So all of my shows were ten people, like playing to just the bands or like so it became this thing where you just show up and you either perform or you either can mail it in and look bad. Yep. So it becomes this thing where you do and kind of internalize it where you're like, not only am I trying to play well but i'm trying to 
perform because it's part of the thing where like mm-hmm. as a room especially if you're like you go to shows and like that's your thing you can tell when a band is not like mm-hmm. invested and it's it's fine if you're not invested i mean it's not fine with a room of 400 people but if you play to 10 people and yeah. you're not giving it what you should be giving it then it's that much more apparent because those yeah. 10 people can physically see there's not a tall person standing in front of them there's no like moshing to like be aware of where they're taking their attention away Mm -hmm. they're just staring at you the whole time yep so you have to be able to flip that switch as hard as it is and it fucking sucks yep when you're getting up and like you're in between stage like you're in between songs you don't even have to use the microphone you're just like what's (laughs) up guys like like how you doing tonight and they can just be like hey i'm good like yep. like it's fucking hard it sucks but like that's it builds the character because like yeah. wesley said like you said like it's like if you can win a room of 10 people mm-hmm. that's so much more intimidating because yeah. like you said like it's like you can look them directly in the eye mm-hmm. and you can watch them turn around and leave the room if they're not into it it's <laughs> yeah. not like someone's not into it in the back and you're playing like the 400 cap webster and you're just like don't notice like you you can know yep so it's like you have to perform and you have to give the same exact set every single time yep and it's fucking hard and it fucking sucks yep but like you gotta just do it yes that's exactly what you have to do i think uh i don't know if most people listen to this i guess probably most people listen are in bands and are aware of this but uh, when i was coming into this world yeah in 2016 2017 like as a fan of concerts the only concerts i'd been to were sold out or well attended right like that is mathematically where the most people are is at big events because everyone wants to see the same thing and as i start getting into shooting shows it's like oh i'm just going to whatever's at the webster tonight i don't know who the fu- i don't know nothing about it i'm just i'm buying a ticket i'm going because i need practice i need to get better at this thing yeah and uh, the first show i walked into uh, i guess there's a fun little side story here of like i <laughs> i get my camera like right before i get a like, christmas present for myself we go on a family trip uh, to south america to see my mom's family uh i take photos at, like a family gathering of people uh, and that's my portfolio when I'm flying to my first show is <laughs> photos that I took a week ago in South America at a family party. Oh yeah. And I, that's my portfolio. I didn't understand what a portfolio really was to me. It was like, yes, I have a collection of photos I've taken. Here they are. Mm. I send them out for some godforsaken reason. The person approves me. It was like, yeah, here's a photo pass and a ticket, which is like, it was one of those, Hell like, yeah. I'm glad I asked to, yeah, get yeah, back to the yeah. Reddit conversation of like, yes, that is part of the game is just putting your name in and you sometimes things go. work out. I remember being horrified of like, I don't, I don't know how I tricked them. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but like, cool. I'm glad I get to the show. And it was like, oh, this is why they approved me mm-hmm. because there was only seven other people there. So they were just hoping to get one more person in the Somebody, room. Somebody, anybody. I'm sure no one looked at my portfolio. I'm sure they probably laughed and they probably showed it to their yeah, the, the yeah. cubicle next to them was like, look at this Yo, fucking idiot. This. Yeah. <laughs> but that idiot was me and it benefited me. And it was beautiful. Yeah, here we but, are. Uh, <laughs> but in hindsight, yes, it was just an eye opening thing of like, oh, I didn't like. You always hear artists talk about shows with three people there. And I always thought it was like, uh, they're exaggerating. They're, yeah. they're not. They're not. At all. They're not at all exaggerating. No. And as I go through this more and more, it becomes more and more comfortable for me. But the other thing I quickly learned is like, the fan has no loyalty to the band. None. You're As you are in there, if you walk out of the room halfway through the set, like, I guess it's rude. I guess it's not kind. But like, that's the band's That's fault. their problem. Yeah. With a camera, where my job is to try and become friends with you after this night, all I could do You're is sit stuck. there and watch the set. You're watch the set. Stuck. And I am aware that because I have a camera, I am now an outlier in the crowd, which makes the band also aware of me. Mm. So then there's this bizarre thing where it's like we're in an empty room, and I know that you guys are almost watching me as much as everyone else. And because I don't really want to be here, I'm not looking like I'm having fun because I'm not having fun. Yeah. I'm trying to focus and think and learn this thing, which is the worst audience member possible for a band. I mean, if it makes you feel better, I never noticed the photographers. Good. Yeah. Good. Like, I looked up at Dreamwake and Adi was just like there. And I was like, <laughs> like, hey, what's up? Like, <laughs> Good. I think it's a sign of a good photographer. It's yeah. like, uh, I think we all want to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. And sometimes that's I more personally also just others, never but. really look up. I've tried to get better at that. Yeah. Like, but. Before Chain Twist, like, I've never, I just play. I'm not worried about what's happening out there. Because if I look up, then I'm not paying attention anymore. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to get better at that because so many times we'll finish a set and it'd be like, yo, the pit was sick. Or like, (laughs) oh, this happened. And I was like, sick. I bet that was cool. I wish I was there. Yeah, I wish I was there. That must have been nice. So I try to look up now, but no, I never notice photographers or anything like that. I just, the only thing I notice is like, right as I'm looking up, like right before we start, I'm like, I'll look at the room and I'll be like, fuck, 
yeah. or like sick. Yep. And then we play and then I look up again and I'm like, what just happened? Cool. Okay. Like, and I need someone to recap normally mm-hmm. because I'm just like only worried about playing drums. The other piece of this that I've been fixated on lately, and I'm curious if this is a you experience as well, or if it's just a me thing. Yeah. I think I've brought up with some other people and I don't remember all the answers that I've gotten. Uh, I realized that I want to watch when I'm watching a show, you were talking about how like when someone's not giving a hundred percent, it's very obvious and easy to tell. Uh, I think to that person who's not giving a hundred percent, they are trying to blend in with the crowd of their band. They're trying to just fit in on stage. Uh, what I've learned is when I'm watching a show, I like to pick one person and I just like fixate on them. And every couple songs I might shift to another person, but like, I'm not watching the whole thing. I'm not watching the pit. Like I am dead set on the guitars and I'm like, what is he thinking? What is he feeling? Is, is the sweat on his hands a problem? Like, what is he stressed about right now? What is going on? And I'm like, so dialed in on that person that it becomes even more apparent who and who isn't giving their best. Right. And I think, I think bands like to believe that they are a unit on stage and they are to some degree, but They're not as a curious human, Everyone kind of picks someone for one reason or another. And for me lately, it's been the drummer that I'm focusing on because it's just like a, a new side quest that I've unlocked. Right, of like, yeah. what the fuck is that thing? How did, yeah. Now I finally understand this thing a tiny bit. Um, but yes, is that how you watch shows as well? Are you also kind of like picking a person at a time? Or are you able to like take in the whole experience? I'm definitely picking it. All, the, it's very reliant on like where I am, what show it is and what's happening. Like sure. if I am at a show, like a knock loose show or mm-hmm. something. And we're like in it, yeah. like not a balcony or like off to the side. I am honestly not even watching the show. Cause like, yeah, I am definitely retired, <coughs> retired in terms of like moshing and stuff. Yep. But I like to be like just close enough yep. to be in danger. Yep. So I am on high alert. I'm yep. like, I don't want to get kicked in the head, but I also want to get knocked around like a little bit. Mm-hmm. So Normally then I'm like watching out for like crowd servers. I'm just kind of like pit policing or whatever. Yeah. Like if someone gets knocked down, I'm picking people up and stuff like that's yep. like my thing. Lately it's been, uh, we, Dan and I saw bear tooth, I think last year for the first time. And I Hell like yeah. had seats and I was like, I don't think I'm ever standing for a show ever again. That's a band I saw at the underground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm really big. I'm like, if I'm going to like see touring bands, I like getting seats or like balcony or just like being able to watch the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like, as a show like i like watching the pit i like watching everything if we're at a local show or a smaller show and then i'm normally picking out like just one thing if it's somewhere where like i'm not shoulder to shoulder with somebody and like i have a room i'm kind of just chilling getting the whole vibe of the room if i'm like side stage i'll normally watch the drummer just out of like interest because i like watching other drummers if i'm not then it's normally just the vocalist because it's Mm -hmm. very easy that was to always just, where my eyes went that's and, yeah, where it I've is like and diversify. that's a good that yeah. is a good job by them whether it's good or bad it's a good job of paying attention because they're captivating enough or if they are so not about yep. it it's a bad thing where i'm like damn what like this dude is having a terrible time mm-hmm. like me as a in a band like i know exactly what's happening yep. and he's like they're not doing what they need to be doing right now that it's, yep. it can show it's showing and they need to figure that out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But. It's bizarre. And as a, a photographer, it was also always so challenging of like, I need to make you look like you're having fun, but you're not making you look like you're having fun. You have to try to make <laughs> the least. room look bigger and like the room look more full and everything's <laughs> more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is all to me. It's a fun challenge. I've, I loosely describe the camera as lying, which I don't yeah. think is a very flattering representation of it. So I don't like to, but like, I think this podcast is a great example of like what you see on camera when people walk into the basement, they always go like, oh, I didn't think it was that. And it's like, yeah, this is very much a basement. It's yeah, very much chilling. not pretty, but like it, I was able to tell the lie on camera. And like, it, I'm very proud of that. I think it's a cool yeah. deception to take. But like, I think a lot of it is a similar thing of like in movies, there's the same thing of like, oh, yeah, we don't want you to know there's catering five feet to the left yeah. and 700 I mean, they're not people on the like, moon. Sometimes, Shit. sometimes, except for the one time that we went to the moon. That one was for sure real, and Steven Spielberg was not real. involved. Vin no one, Diesel was definitely on the moon. Facts. Yes, yes. I saw him there in my own two eyes. I had a big zoom lens. <laughs> <laughs> also with the telescope, I guess. Family. Um, yes. <laughs> one quarter mile at a time on the moon. Um, yes, life was great. Um, I'm forgetting where I was going with that. I've derailed this again. Uh, Fast please. Uh, there's no better way to be derailed than by the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, staring at someone on stage. Yeah. Oh, the lie. Person. The lies the of lie. cameras of like, yeah, my job is to make this thing look better than it is. And like, that is a fun game to me of like, yeah, how do you do that? And I, it's this weird thing of like, I don't want to be dishonest. And again, in interviews, there's a similar thing of like, I don't want to put out a clip that is misrepresentative of us, 
but I am going to combine a couple seconds that weren't connected and take out likes and ums and make yeah, the thing yeah, more flattering. Yeah, yeah, get all and, the dead space out. Yeah, no. Uh, or even not just dead space of like there was a, I'm thinking of the Shane clip that I just was working on. So Shane's episode will be out tomorrow, I guess, as I record this in two weeks as you ago as you're hearing it. Um, but he I like tells a story. to listen to a work tomorrow. Hell yes. Uh, he tells a story and then like goes on a tangent in the middle of it and then goes back to the story at the end. And to me, it's like, yeah, cut out these five minutes, get 30 seconds from here and 30 seconds from here. So it is a Frankenstein of a clip, but it's also a cohesive thought. And it's always this like fine line to me of like, I don't want to misrepresent you, but I can make you more flattering. I can make yeah, this thing more exciting. A little more and digestible in a short form. Content. And that's a really fun game to be. And I think that's music videos that we're talking about. Yeah, we've filmed a couple in the change with space. And it's like, I hope you don't know those are the same place. And we do. And it's convenient yeah, that we we've do. had to. Uh, I guess Half Heart is the other great example of like, I've filmed... I think 10 videos and I think eight or nine of them were in Jay's basement. Like it's, it's unbelievable how much yeah. we were able to do in a basement that is a very normal basement. Yeah. Uh, and that's a very fun game to me, but it's also this very, I don't know, it makes me aware of how good other people are at the game. And that is, yeah, where we get distrust in cameras and all this other stuff where it's a, a bizarre art that I'm happy to play, but I'm aware that it's like one, I don't want to say I lie for a living because I understand that's unflattering, but it's right. like, to some degree, that's the job of the camera. That's the Pretty job much. of media. That is the job of me is to make everyone look cooler and better than they are. Yeah. And yeah, hope that it's close enough to reality that it's not shocking and, and unacceptable to people. Right. Yeah. Um, but cool. That is that. Um, I want to touch on climbing. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'll touch on climbing for a quick second here. Yeah. Uh, we're at 52 minutes, so we're doing great. We're cruising here. Oh, sick. Um, no, actually, uh, the question I have written down here that I think is a more interesting place to go. Uh, oh, climbing yeah. is fun to talk, but I think we would chat about it a little bit. Uh, and this piece is an interesting segment. Uh, we're talking about the local shows and how sometimes people aren't there. And yeah, that is a daunting thing to go through time after time. Yeah. Uh, for me, similar with photos, it's the same thing. If I show up for a while and no one sees the photos, there is no one excited to take photos of. It takes a while before you get permission to work with the artists that you really want to work with. And there's a lot of in between there. Uh, my question that I had written down here is like, what kept you in it? And I think I asked myself the same question and I'm trying to be more aware of it, of like, uh, I heard uh, Theo Vaughn, Mr. Podcast Comedy, uh, talk about how like he's been going through this phase lately where like he feels like he made a decision to be a comedian 10 years ago or 20 years ago, whatever the fuck the number was, and then just stayed with it and then never really stopped to evaluate like, is this really what I want to do? And I think I think what he has found is that he still wants to do it. Uh, but it was a really interesting thought to me of like, yeah, I picked up a camera in 2016 and I just kind of been in motion and I... I'm still figuring out like, what are the parts of this that are most exciting? What do I really love about this? What keeps me here? Because I don't want to just do it because I've done it. I want to do it because I'm still actively learning and exciting. And like, I am having a ton of fun figuring that out, but it's been an interesting question of like, yeah, don't just do it because you've been doing it, do it because it's still new and exciting. And I'm curious. Yeah. As the local band sense, like what kept you in it? What got you through all those shows and what continues to keep you through some of those when they pop up? People just keep asking me to play, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, quitting and stuff was never like an option it was mm -hmm. more of just like an acceptance this is like this is what it is yeah like trying to be in a band that is successful is it's like being a pro athlete and stuff mm -hmm. like it's like your net and like your opportunity is so small yeah that going through almost 10 like basically 10 years until change was the playing like nothing shows it's just like you love music you want to play in front of people like you want people to see your art yeah and so it's going to play to 15 people and really trying to make at least three of them like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then like also do you want to make it, uh, I'm interrupting you. So no, I apologize for being rude, but do you want them to like it because you want their acceptance or because you want to make their lives better? What is the motive to make do you want to, and I, again, I'm asking this because I asked myself the same question. No, like, yeah. When I make a music video, like I think it's mostly because I want to make you like it. Like I, it is exciting to me that you guys come to me with a, a bunch of ideas that kind of fit together. They kind of don't. There's some rough edges in there and it's really fun for me to package it up and go, this is the best version of what you were thinking of. And right. I enjoy that game a lot. Um, but I'm curious. Yeah. What's been your, what's been your motivation there? Or on, sorry. Yeah. Which yeah are you? On a, on a personal, like yeah. sub personal level, I feel like it's definitely just like, I want to be accepted. Yeah. Like in feeling like bouncing around like hockey didn't work out and like all these things so like yeah. i'm like oh cool i'm in music now and like people like it and i have friends and stuff so now yep. it's just like what do i do to stay here mm -hmm. like how can i stay in this like yep. circle and just keep you keep going yeah um with chain twist like it's the first time where it's like oh this feels like a band where like 
I want people to like this. Like this, I think people will like. I want people to react to this. I want, like we were saying earlier, like it's an energy thing where I want this to provide something where mm -hmm. it can be like a culture of a thing that yeah. you can partake in. Um, that's banned me. But yeah, personal me is definitely just like looking for validation. 100%. And just like we accepting. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you're in that band. That's sick. Like, that's super cool. Like, it's weird though, because the genre of music we play, like my friends who are not about it will be like, oh, you're in a band. That's so cool. Like, tell me about your band. And mm -hmm. you have to do the whole dance of like, yes. it's a band that sounds yep. like, and they're like, what do you play? And I'm like, I play drums. It's really loud and aggressive. And they're like, I want to come see you play. And I'm like, please don't. Yep. It's so funny that I want the show to be full. And then I have people actively asking, like, I want to come to your show. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that's fine and i really i don't mean it to be bad but like i it's so strange bringing people into like our world that don't oh, yeah. know about it oh yeah because in their head it's like oh you play a concert i'm mm -hmm. like no we play shows when i say i it's make music so different living, it's the same it's thing. so yeah. different yeah. like i the bridgeport show that you shot for us like back in october one of my friends from work went and he's a little older than us and he came up to me after and he's like that was so cool i'm pretty sure this is like my first concert i've ever been to and i'm like mm -hmm. what yeah i'm like one i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> like that there's maybe 20 people here and like and you, you, i don't know but like thanks for coming and it feels weird because like if you aren't like a part of the scene i guess i don't mean that negatively but if mm -hmm. you're if you haven't been to local shows and stuff you kind of almost don't know how to like entertain yourself yeah so not only am i like unless you come with a group of people too and then you can kind of like hang out on your own but like if just one person comes and you're like i'm here to support you like now i feel like that's you're my job mm -hmm. like not mm -hmm. only do i have to worry about playing setting up it's like hey are you good are you entertained like are you yeah. miserable right now are you yep. never gonna come again like so i I'm stuck between like the validation of like obviously wanting to impress like my music friends. Do it. <gasps> the big do the thing. Call. Do I the thing. That it's right do the, the thing. Um, hello. Hi, Peter. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live comment this. So, Peter is forced to keep this in. Hi, Spotify, YouTube. Um, Peter is taking a break. He's been waiting all day to buy a car. Technically here, he bought the car, but didn't okay. give them any money. But he's been waiting all day for this call, apparently, and has been answering spam calls, and has been just his whole day disrupted, waiting for this call, and they didn't call him. He had texted me. He was like, yo, we might like have to push the pod back because I might have to go pick up the car. And uh, they finally called, and he's on the phone with them right now, and I can't hear what's going on because he walked out of the room because he's a good person and didn't want to inconvenience me with the listening to the call, but I kind of wanted to hear what was going on. Um, but, yeah, Peter's getting a new car, so if this somehow stays in the podcast on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever, leave a comment that says congratulations on your new car, Peter. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I can maybe, you know what? I can keep ranting. This podcast thing is easy. I'm not going to though because I say that and it's going to be bad. So I'm just going to stop now. So if this makes it in, I'm sorry that you just had to listen to that last like two and a half minutes. So keep listening to Peter. Don't listen to me. Um, I'll get to that after. Um, okay. Uh, I assume I'll cut out. <laughs> a potato flew around my room. I hope you had a beautiful time. Uh, I don't know how much of your monologue I will leave in. I think I, people should hope that I leave all of it, it in. It was but probably <laughs> like a minute and a half, but in my brain it felt like probably like 10. I was just like still talking, and it's one of those things where I get in a loop where I'm like stop talking, but I can't stop. Sick. Hell yes. I am eager to dive into it. It was bad. As I get there. It wasn't good. Um, thankfully, Please it's all on camera. It's all recorded most here. Of it out. Uh, I might. We'll see. Yeah, I'll see, see how much trouble I mean, you if did. it gets in, I kind of deserve it. I didn't yeah. say anything that you couldn't put in there. You should have. That'd be the fun part. Is I mean, I would have caught it later on, but it would yeah, be really funny I to sneak in something well, horrific into that. Yeah, no, so I, I didn't. I, I sit down at my computer in a week and go, what the I should have left a little gift for you, but I did. Well, Easter egg. No, yes. I was good. I Return the favor. I was behaved. Hell yes. Beautiful. I'm I'm bummed out because we were in a great motion of conversation. No, there, that's okay. I, I can it. pick it right back up about talking about how like friends come to shows. Yeah, we're fine. I'm um, on track. Great. Okay. We'll wrap up in a minute. But yes, I do want to see that conversation through and then get to it. Um, yes, my uh, two tangents there uh, were one, 
uh, yeah, I hate telling people I do music videos for a living or that I film concerts for a living because, yeah. like, oh, how is Justin Bieber? How is Taylor Swift? And it's yeah, like, it's very hard eh, to like kind of scale that down. Uh, the other piece of this is like my childhood best friend. I like lived at their house. I'm like, they're they have five kids, and I feel like I'm the sixth mm-hmm. oftentimes. Uh, their mother uh, was just like chatting with their son, who's my friend. Uh, I'm trying to leave names out of this and I'm making a mess of a web of people here. But yeah, the yeah. mom of the family uh, <laughs> was kind of like, oh, Peter listens to that. And my friend was like, yeah, he's listening to this whole life. How did you never know? Yeah. And mom was like, he's such a nice guy. There's no way. And it's like, it's not the worst. No, that's yeah. There is some release there. Uh, I heard this thing described as like a, almost like a Batman kind of thing. And I was reading about it in the context of uh, professional athletes. Uh, and the example in the, in the book was about Tiger Woods and his marital instability uh, that like people need some secret part of them and people almost I, I'm trying to just think of a better phrase and get their rocks off on having a secret part of them. Yeah. Um, but there is something there of like part of the fun of being a metal is like, Oh, you don't know how cool this thing I was at last night. Yeah. And no one else will appreciate how cool this thing is except for us. Uh, and it's similar. Yeah. I guess for the tiger woods example, the book was arguing that like, that's part of his greatness. It's like he had this part of him. They had to protect with such a ferocity that everything else was on the table. And by being at the golf course all day, it was a way to protect this part of him. Right. And it's Jordan with his gambling. It's, yeah, uh, there's a long list of experts and brilliant people who have had these uh, Achilles heels that aren't really tended to and how the two of them kind of go hand in hand. And like, yeah, Bruce Wayne is what makes Batman great when if he's Batman full time, he can't be that. And he needs this like, yeah, this dark secret that he's keeping and protecting. And I think for us as humans, obviously, Tiger Woods' marital infidelities are not quite the same as metal, but there is something there of like, I think we need our own little corner of safety. That is something that is unique to us that we have a community in, but it's like most people don't get it. And that's part of what makes it fun. It's part of what makes it ours and part of what makes it like exciting and thrilling is like, oh, no one gets how cool this is. And I'm thinking of one of my best friends who loves video games. He plays Kingdom Hearts all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking of him as well. Like, yeah, it's the same thing. Like he... He loves that. I think part of what he loves about that is that there's not many people who love it. It's not Madden. It's not 2K. It's not Call of Duty. It's not one of these massive franchise. Or yeah. I'm sure Kingdom Hearts is a massive franchise, but not to that scale. Yeah, not as mainstream, I guess. And there is something about being in a niche that is like intrinsically fulfilling that I think is a really interesting part of this. Yeah, it's definitely nice to feel like you're obviously not the only one, but yep. like finding like a little sliver of society that hasn't exactly been super oversaturated and overexposed. Mm-hmm is kind of nice because it is kind of like that like hipster feel where like yes you wouldn't get it like it's it's it as weird as that is and i don't like i don't think of it like that but like it definitely it is kind of like a nice exclusivity of like yep yeah well i listen to x band and they're like who is that and you either get the opportunity to gatekeep and be a dick Mm -hmm. or like you can ex- like you can expose someone to a new thing, and it, yes. that's how it grows. So it's cool to kind of find something first, I guess, in your friend group, and be like, "Hey, this is this is yeah. a thing." And I think this is also the uh, as you're saying that it kind of clicked in my brain that like, oh, that's also the reason that we like feel betrayed when a band goes too mainstream and leaves our our little nucleus. It's like, hey, we had this little secret that we were all in on, and all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. you're like abandoning us, and it's a which is so funny. It that, is. like people get mad at that. It's yes. like, damn, the band you like, other people like, that's fucking crazy. Yes, I can't believe that they're successful. Like, fuck them, I guess. It's a bizarre thing that we all feel. It's a very normal thing, and I've never quite understood it. And as you were saying, I think, yeah, to some degree, it's that. It's like we feel like we're all in this little club that was private and it was supposed to be private. The only thing I get mad of is that it costs more. I'm (laughs) stoked that they're famous. Like, that's so cool that, like, I could see people post, like, on Instagram that I'm like, you listen to this? What the fuck is wrong with you? And I can be like, yo, like, that's so cool that you listen. I'm like, yeah, I listened to this album. I'm like, that's sick. I've been listening, not in a bragging way, but like, I've been listening for so long. It's so cool that you like this now. But then I go to be like, oh, I want to see X band or whatever. And tickets are like 200 bucks now because everybody likes it. And mm-hmm. it needs to be this big show. Yep. I'm like, no, I want my $30 ticket pack. You dick. Like, yep. stop. Yeah. I want you to be famous, <laughs> but not like no one wants to go see you famous. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hell yes. Mission accomplished. We did it. Uh, we I would keep going, it. but it looked, our SD card only has like four minutes on it left. So I want to oh, make sure we God. get out here in time. Um, normally I use bigger SD cards, but they're full of other fun stuff that I haven't felt comfortable it's an clearing. an average size SD card. Life's going on here. Uh, what is an average size? The SD card. Don't worry about it. 
Okay. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you made a joke that went over my head, and I just had a. Uh, everyone makes fun of Joe Rogan for having these moments where people make a joke, and he's just is like, well, "That's not what that is." And yeah, well, I think a lot. I a lot yeah, a lot um, of times. I mean, a lot of times I say jokes under my breath like that. They're just for me. They're really not for. But those are the ones that need yeah. to be in yeah, my brain. Like the they're most. just for me. Life's good. Um, I bought a car, or we're buying a car tomorrow morning. Life's great. Hell yeah! Um, I have a car. That was my phone call. I appreciate. <laughs> Whoever the fuck was listening, being patient with me. Uh, the lady was beautiful. I'll tell all you all bad. about her. She was a great friend of mine, um, or now is my best friend. Um, yeah. Life's good. Uh, Change was a show coming up at the Cave on West Haven, August 3rd. Buy tickets, uh, possibly online, possibly at the door. $15 at the door for sure. Definitely just show up. Just Have fun. Just come through. Don't pay a service fee. Fuck it. Like, just show up. Yep. $15 at the door. Beautiful. That's $15, it. I think five, six bands, $3 a band. How much yeah, better can you get? It's like five, it's five bands. It's going to be fun. Come. Hell yes, through, I guess. Hell yes, yeah. you spent fifteen dollars on way worse things. So way give it to a good worse cause. things. Give it to me. Don't even give it to the <laughs> cave. Just give it to me directly. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, through the fire escape back door. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll. Yeah, if you don't want to go into the front door, I'll be at the back. Fifteen dollars through them. Yeah, yeah. Ten dollars through me. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Hell yes. Shout out good business practices. Shout out Capulet Festival. Um, Capulet Fest. Uh, Ryan, where can people follow you on social media? Where can they keep up with you? Where can they tell you that you're beautiful and did awesome for the fourth time on this show? Oh, hell yeah. Am I, I think I'm winning now. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I, I think I'm didn't winning. do the math, but I'm sure you are. Yeah. I think I'm winning. Um, Instagram's is Ryan underscore Obear. Um, I really don't use social media a lot. I've kind beautiful. of actually been like pretty good about not hell yeah. posting and like being on it i just use it to like doom scroll my life away but yeah right instagram's the one i probably use the most twitter doesn't count i don't know um yeah facebook is a thing yeah it's just ryan it's just my name look at my name cool no cool thing it's just my name it's all in the description changes yeah. to be in the description as well Chain twist, uh, everything else like all the trees of stuff that i do is all in the description on instagram for hell me. yes Blind Euphoria as well. Blind we'll Euphoria. Get back to that when the time comes. Yeah, it's all yeah. it's all there. It's all I'll the description. I'll eventually, Josh and I will eventually pretend that's a thing again. Hell yes. Um, Hell yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leave a like, leave a comment, have fun. Tell Ryan he's beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm going to get out of here before the SD card closes and before Happy I forget what the car It's going to be me. after someone listening to this is going to have one less finger after the weekend. Yeah, I saw that tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you don't know it yet. Shout out Jason Pierre Paul. That's probably a tragic shout JPP, out. JPP, baby. Maybe we should cut that one out, but I probably won't. Nope, have a great life. It. Episode 72, Ryan O'Bear. We did it. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Bye.